God, and let not your flock flick glory in your sight. Oh God, and let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, God. You are my strength, and you are my believer, my everything. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. I honor the Lord Jesus for being here before the saints of God and yet finding me saved and sanctified and still filled with his precious Holy Ghost and are running over to the end to see what the end is going to be. I'm thankful to God for being married to my wonderful wife as we celebrated 11 wonderful years of marriage on this weekend. Amen, somebody. Amen. Isn't it good to be married and to love and to have a mate that loves God and puts God first just like you do? It's a blessing. And it's an honor and it's a privilege to just love God. And I'm thankful on this morning to stand before you as your apostle and to teach you the truths of God. And this morning, if you have your Bibles, we shall turn to the third part of the series of 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, we will begin at the 18th verses. The 18th verse of 2 Kings, and we're going to do a little reading here. We're going to go from 18 all the way to the end, which is uh, to the 37th verse. And we're talking about our title is Shut the door and let God move. Shut the door and let God move. So, if you have it, I want you to say reply as amen. Amen. Amen, amen somebody. All right. And it says this language, And when the child was grown and fell on the day, that when he went out to his father to the rivers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him upon the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God to come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she sat on an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So when she went and came into the man of God to Mount Carmel, and it came to pass that the man of God saw her afar off and said, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, It is well with thee, it is well with thy husband, it is well with thy child. And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away, and he and the man of God said to her, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, I desire that, did I desire a son of my Lord? And did I say, not say, do not deceive me? Then Gehazi said, Gird up thy Lord and take thy staff in thy hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. If any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But neither was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore we went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awakened. And when Elisha was coming to the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. 
And he went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto the Lord. And went up and lay upon the child upon his mouth, upon his mouth, and eyes upon his eyes, and hands upon his hands, and stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. And when he returned to the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him, the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And then he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite, so he called her. And when she was come in unto him, Say, take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. I say to you, shut the door and let God move. We see through this this scenario, through the whole uh, chapter, the fourth chapter of Second Kings, uh, Elisha. Is having dealings first with a with a widow, and then she's having dealings with the Shunammite woman, where he had prophesied to the Shunammite woman, uh, where her husband was old, and and where the Shunammite woman was uh, was a young woman, and her husband was old, and she was without a child. And as that time goes along, he prophesied to her, and she said, "Don't lie to me." And then at the time of light, the child came. As the child grew up, was in the field with his daddy, working, the child complained about his head hurting. So I can imagine that it might have been so hot out there that the child may have had sunstroke. Loose hair. So the child had a sunstroke, and he said, my head is dead. And the first thing the daddy said, go take him to his mom. So he took him to the mama. The mama was, was nourishing. That's what mothers do. Nourish. They're, 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 they nurse uh, children back to health. So what mama was probably doing, probably had a, a cold towel and cold water, probably was rubbing him on his head and trying to get him, uh, you know, cooled off. And then he sat there and he just gave him the go. He died. And, and what she did, we can could, could see just as any mother would do, would go frantic and just break down and Problem. And she would think of all the things that she asked God to do. And she said, uh, I need to find the man of God. She said, I need to find the man of God here. Excuse me. So what 
God desires for us is for us to be purified. And when we are purified and we shut the door on life situations and it's just us and God, then the miracle happens. God can show himself strong. And in this story, God truly showed himself strong. So when he, she found the man of God on Mount Carmel, and, you know, the servant tried to block her. And we see this in church a lot, that, you know, sometimes armorers or pastors or adjutants of the bishops or the apostles or whatnot will try to keep the people to get the message to what they, when they're trying to find the man or woman of God, take him out. So when they try to find uh, the man and woman of God, you know, we have people that try to uh, block those things from uh, happening. So the woman was so uh, desperate that she asked uh, that the servant came to her and said, is, is everything well with you? Is your husband with you? Are you well? Is your son well? Is all is well? She just said all is well. But what happened? You understand that God does not always tell a prophet everything. Because we know it part, and if we see it part, we know it part. So somewhere else, another prophet has the other part as to what needs to be saved by God. So understand, since God had hid that from Elisha, and he could not see that, he didn't know what was happening to the Shulamite woman that the child had done. So understand, we know it all. We prophesy in part. We can only see, and can only say what God allows us to see and say. Amen. Amen, somebody. We can only see and say what God allows us to see. Or say. And we cannot operate out of the level of grace that we have been given. The Apostle Paul talks about it in, uh, I believe, Galatians or Ephesians, that, that he, he doesn't, that he walks in the grace that God has given him. So when God, when you have an anointing over your life, you cannot step out of the, the, the element of the grace that has been given to you. So, if you are an evangelist, you cannot step out and, and, and be a prophet because God has not given you that mantle to be a prophet if you're an evangelist. If you're a teacher, you can't step out and, and be an apostle because that mantle is not upon your life. God has not given you that grace over your life. And this is where a lot of us go wrong in the church. We try to step out of the element of grace that's uh, on our lives. And we end up getting ourselves in trouble because we open ourselves up to the forces of hell to attack us. And we're not fully equipped. We have not been equipped to walk in that area of anointing. So we know that the man of God, he didn't know what had happened uh, with the Shunammite woman and her family. And she was so desperate, she did like the woman with the issue of blood. She bypassed Gehazi, and she fell out of the seat and grabbed his ankles. And, and she just, just cried and broke down. Okay. And she told him, uh, didn't you say that God promised me a son? Man. Didn't I ask you not to lie to me? And she was saying that, uh, that her child was dead. And they said, okay, get yourself together, gird your Lord, and take this staff. So in other words, what, what was trying to happen, sometimes uh, we're trying to divert uh, attention or give, uh, delegate responsibility to someone else that is not qualified for that responsibility. And that's what Elijah first tried to do. But I can imagine what the Lord was saying in his ear. No, no, Elisha, you go. I did not anoint Gehazi. 
even though that he's a servant, he's being trained as he's, in other words, he's like a Padawan learner. He, he's being trained to be a prophet, but he's not released yet. So I need you as the prophet, Elisha, with your double of that anointing to go here and assist this woman. Because I put the word in your mouth and told you what I said that she's going to have child and, and this doesn't suck. So what happened? They sat on the ass and they went back to the child. And she said, uh, he walked in the house and they probably said, well, okay, where is he? He's up in the room where you stay at. So the child was in there. And the first thing he did, he saw the child and he shut the door. Then another situation in the word of God, Jesus had a time when they had to pray for this man. Jesus put all the unbelievers out. So if the Lord has to put the unbelief out and shut the door to keep unbelief out, what does that tell us? We have the authority and the right to shut the door on situations in our life that are not favorable to God. So what happened? Jesus put the unbelief out, shut the door. And when he prayed, there was a miracle that happened. There was healing that took place. There was deliverance that took place. So when that, that happened, the man was totally healed, delivered, and set free. So in your life, if you have unbelief, you have to shut the door on that situation and tell Satan to be here. You got to get him off your back. You got to say, Ah, God. If for you, then you I live. And for you, I die. And for you, I have my, I move, I have my ability, and I have my being, God. Without you, I cannot go. Without you, God, I cannot move. Without you, God, I cannot breathe. Without your anointing, God, I can do nothing in of myself. But it's you, O oh Lord, because Lord, I need you now. I need you right away, God. I need you to go to God. I need you to move in this situation. I shut the door and I let fear and doubt go out. Lord, I need you. I need you because you are the air that I breathe. You are the joy of my salvation. You are my life. You are my strength. In you will I trust. Yes. Yes. We have come to a point in life that you tell God it's just you, God. It's just me and you. And I can imagine that the prophet got in the room and he shut the door and he prostrated himself on the top, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands, and he breathed. But first, what he did after he shut the door, he prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, I need you right now. Lord, you promised this woman that she was going to have a son. Lord, let your glory, let your anointing, and let your power be revealed today. So sometimes we have those situations in life. And it gets hot and heavy. It gets too hard for us. We got to turn to Jesus. We have to turn like, ah, uh, no, no, no. We have to do like Hezekiah. Turn our back to the Lord and say, Lord, have I lived for you? Have I did this for you, God? Lord, I've stayed only in your sight, God. Even when I've seen God, I repented. I got myself together, God. Lord, help me today. And that's how we establish the relationship with God. When you have a true relationship with God, when you go home there before the throne of grace, shout of us. When you go boldly, 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 not like a house. Don't scream like a sissy. Hit the devil. Hit the devil where it counts. You got to hit the devil where it counts. So when you hit the devil where it counts, hallelujah, then hit the door shut on him. You done did a one-two KO. Knock out punch. You get it. It's you and God. The devil can't get in. And you say, God, it's just me and you. And when you have that relationship with God, He can move 
any which way he desires. Yes. yes. He can make something out of nothing even being there. Amen. I've seen God do it. I've seen God do it in a revival. Well, this apostle came in a revival when you were and I. There was a lady that was there that had one leg shorter than the other. And she walked on the limp because of that one leg being shorter than the other. And the apostle said, daughter, come here. And he said, told the sisters, the missionaries, to lay her on the ground and to put, and put sheets on her. And he commanded, and he said, all of you that don't believe God, I need you to move and go sit down. Amen. What he did, he shut the door on unbelief. Amen. He put the unbelief out. Yeah. He said, if you don't believe, if your spirit ain't right, if you're not right, go sit down. We don't need you up here right now. We don't need a spectating spirit. We need you to sit down. The apostle set the people down. And only the, the people that believed that God was going to do it stood there and prayed and interceded for the lady. And when, when, when we got done, the lady began to, began to praise the Lord and she began to scream. She said that she felt her leg just pull and stretch. God made her leg one, the one that had the deficit. The short leg became the same lift as the other leg. And she had to learn how to walk right. And she told people, she was like, oh my God, God healed me. Because it was saying my hip was crooked because one leg is an inch shorter than the other. And now the sister walks straight. Y'all tell me, ain't God good? Yes, ain't God good? Yes, ain't it good? His mercy will go And you out there watching me over here on the internet. God can do it. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. But you have to trust him. You have to love him. You have to have a true relationship with him. And how do you have a true relationship with the Lord? Repent of your sins and be converted and be delivered and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you'll have power. That's how you have a relationship with God. Understand God that the man of God stretched himself over the child. He prayed and he breathed on him. The child started to get warm. So I can imagine in, in, in the spirit that the anointing of the mantle of God was being placed upon this child. The Shunammite child. Saying that the Lord rebuke him. The Lord Christ find you in the name of Jesus. And what occurred? The child sneezed seven times. And what happened? He gave it back to the mother. So I can imagine when the man of God came, everybody was probably trying to look, trying to see what was going on. And that's what people do in society today. But the man of God had to put everybody out, shut the door, go into prayer, intercession with the Lord, and the child was raised. You know how this ministry started? This ministry was birthed through prayer, and continually more is going to happen, more through prayer, more through fasting. That's what we need. Prayer and fasting. But also with the prayer and fasting, you're going to have to obey God. You can't walk in your own way and think that God is going to keep blessing you. Because for one, you know, you may think that you, you're blessed, but when you start to be in sin, and you, in sin you step out of the blessed place of God. You step out of the ark of sleep. Amen, people of God. Amen. We have to shut the door on situations that are not fair. Okay, I know of someone that, that uh, worked at a company here in the city and they had laid off about a thousand people here, here in this city. Prestigious place, you know, that has a, a school and a hospital attached to it. Laid off a thousand people. And the sister I know, I went to college with her, she, she was saying messages on Facebook, Lord, I'm praying. They don't come back to my job. Lord, Hold me. Keep me, keep me, 
know, and, and I said in reply to her, I said, I will pray that the Lord will preserve you and keep you there. And she said, thank you. See, people recognize who the man and woman of God, men and women of God really are. When I look at some of my, my friends and, and, and uh, brothers, when they have activities or something's going on, they don't call on none of the other, none of the other preachers because they know who's really living right. They know who can get a prayer to. They called me. They, they didn't call me because of who I was. They called me because I got power in the Lord. Told a friend of mine that he was about to walk into a trap. Because God showed it to me. God showed it to me like an open vision. Like I was standing there watching, like I was watching TV. God showed me. him coming and meeting a young lady. And the young lady was like, and it was like a spirit behind her was like Medusa. It looked like something beautiful at first, but behind that spirit was like a spirit of Medusa, seducing him. And God woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I began to pray and nudge my wife and said, we got we, we to pray, we got to pray for him, we got to pray for him, because God showed me, he's trying to, the devil's trying to set him up to walk him in a trap, to get his life, to get him out of the purpose of where God is trying to take him. And I called him. I said, my brother, the Lord, God, says, don't do it. Don't go there. Because you're going to be set up. You're going to walk into a trap. Don't do it. And when the young man was out with the, with the, with the young woman, she tried to set him, tried to get him trapped up. And he left. He had, he had to do a Joseph move, y'all. And he had the balance. And, and he, he told me, called me and said, I thank God for you all, for really praying for me, looking and looking out. And he said, I know, he said, I know you are truly a man of God, and your woman, your wife is truly a woman of God. Because I would have not known that myself. And he said, I thank God for you all praying for me, that God would show you that. Because I was about to walk into a trap. He said, and I, don't want, I, I, don't, I don't know what I would have done. I wouldn't have been able to control myself. But he said, I thank God for using you as an instrument to help me. So understand. What do we do in this situation? We put all unbelief out. So everybody else that was talking in his ear, he didn't want to hear everybody else talking in his ear. But some people was like, yeah, oh, you know, go, 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 go do your thing, you know. And um, I was like, no. God said you're walking into a trap. And just as God sat on the throne, he was about to walk into that trap. But the Lord started to deal with him. God had said it through me when we were at the restaurant. And I said it before all the men that were sitting there at the table. They were looking like, wow. Now all these other men, young men, except one of them, knew God. Now the one that sat next to me, he knew God. And the young man who I was speaking with, he's trying to know the Lord. And all three of us, stood together after, the, after we got done eating at the restaurant. And I began to prophesy to him what thus saith the Lord. And just as the Lord gave it to me, it started to unfold right there in front of his eyes. And he was just like, wow, God is so real. God uses people for real. He said, and I know that the anointing is on your life. And God walks with you. Because I wouldn't know nothing. God showed that to you. He said, just how you prophesied that thing to me, it started unfolding, it started happening. And I'm not glorifying, I'm not, I'm not glorifying myself. I'm glorifying God. I said, you 
know what? It's, it's, it's not me. It's God that gives me that ability to do that. It is God. Not no glory to me, but it is God. But saints, things that are unfaithful, shut the door on those things in your life. If you have depression, you got to shut the door on depression. You got worry, shut the door on worry. If, 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 if you got anxiety, shut the door on anxiety. If you if you don't feel it, you got to shut the door on that. You got to decree and declare. And the Bible says that if you decree and declare a thing, it shall be what? It shall be established. But then if you do it like this, if you have out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, what does it say? The truth should be established. So when you decree and declare a thing, and you have two or three witnesses that decree and declare the same thing uh, with them, that thing will come to fruition. So what did Elisha do? He had the witnesses there, the mother and the father. He began to go down and pray. And decree and declare that the, that the young man would be healed and that he would raise up from the dead. He did. I want you to know that same way how the young man was raised from the dead was how our Lord and Savior, Jesus, was raised from the dead. Jesus died for our sins. He took all of the wounds that we should have got. Got treated. Treated worse than a slave. But it was his blood that was shed that had brought redemption to us to where we can shut the door on the situations and let God. It was Jesus that gives us the power to do the impossible. For without Somebody. Speak to me, people. With God, all things, not some things, all things are possible. If God before you, who can do what? Who can be against you? You're the head and not the tail. You're what? Above and not beneath. You're the head to judge the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shut the door on the situations and the vicissitudes of life that are not your favor. Oh God, you tell me, Lord, you know the way I take. When you try, I shall come forth as gold. I shall decree and I shall declare a thing. It should be established as truth in the earth. Amen, somebody. Amen. Elijah shut the door. Pray unto God. The miracle happened. And the result of the miracle, the child was raised from the dead. Just as our Lord had seen, he got it. With all power in his hands. Took the keys of death and hell from Satan. Satan no longer had no power over him. So what, this is where, in this story, this is where you see Jesus at. Uh-huh. So every time a preacher gets up and preach, you have to understand, if he don't talk about Jesus, then there's something wrong. Amen. Then he's not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's preaching some other gospel. Because everything points to the cross, Amen. to the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Shut the doors and let God move. If you have an idea for your business, go in your secret closet and shut the door. Shut out that. Shut out worry. Shut out insecurities. Shut out low self-esteem. Shut it out! And 
go to God and say, God, I need you. I need you more than ever before. I can't do this thing by myself, but God, if you be with me, I know I can do it. We have to know who we are and know whose we are. In For we all are bought with the what? A price. The price was paid on Calvary's cross. Salvation is free. It's a free gift that he truly gives. That he wants everyone to have. He doesn't want our souls to perish. He doesn't want us to go to hell. But we send our sins to him. By the choices we make. The Apostle Paul said, if we continue in sin, the grace abound. God forbid. If you want God to move in our life, then pray. Stay away from those things that are not pleasing <coughs> to God. And those out there watching, if you really, truly want to be saved and live for God, ask God to forgive you of your sins and wash you in His precious blood and deliver you from that addiction. The addictions to, to, to drugs, to alcohol, to, to sex, the addictions to uh, all, all the things that are not like God. And He will deliver you. He will save you. And you'll get up with power. Amen. Because if we don't have His power, we can't do as it is the word of God. The dead will be raised, bodies will be healed. There won't be any deliverance if we don't have a relationship with God. Shut the door and let God. He said, if I be lifted up above the earth, I will do what? I will do what? I will draw some of you all men unto me. So that is what the mission and the goal is. This points to Jesus and this symbolizes God giving Jesus the power and that he rose from the dead just as it was prophesied. And what happened? He returned back to the glory and he's now sitting at the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for us. Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord. I remember saying here in the old saints, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I what? Till I die. And they would sing that song and they are blessing of God would come in and, and things would start to move. And you would start to see the sinners come from off the street. Come in and stagger in drunk and repent. And say, Lord, what, what, what must I do to be saved? Here I was back in 1998. Raised in church all my life. Getting high, getting drunk. And I went to church with my sister this one Sunday, and I know I wasn't right. And I was like, I came to the church, I was high. And I was sitting on the back pew of the church. Weed still on my breath. Alcohol still on my breath. And the Spirit of God was so heavy upon the bishop that day when he was preaching. God was talking directly to me. Bishop didn't know me from Adam. He didn't know me. Never seen me before. And when he made the altar appeal, I literally ran up to the altar. And I cried out to God and asked him to forgive me and wash me and make me over again and fill me with the Holy Ghost. I gave it all up. And they tarried with me on that altar. And I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Or actually, 
kind of grief feel because I got baptized in the Holy Ghost of two years prior, but I got grief feel. So, mind you, I had some disobedience. I didn't want to follow God because God called me to preach in 1997. And I said, no, God, I don't want to do it because I see what my grandfather and my father had to deal with and all that. Stuff. I don't want to do it. And I strayed away from God. But God always had. He said, whom the Lord loves, he chastened. And he scourged every son whom he received. So I got myself ready. And he refilled me with the Holy Ghost. And I got delivered from smoking weed, from weed pipes, and enjoying some blunts, drinking that alcohol. Now, I'm not talking about no, no little stuff, no, just, I'm talking about heavy stuff. Crown Royal, Hennessy, Paul Masson, E.N.J. God took a taste out of my mouth. He delivered, urged me there. And every time that I came around drugs or alcohol, it just made me, just made me, I just felt sick. On the inside, I literally would feel sick. And I had to weep. And to this day, when people are doing that around me, I have to I, I have to move away. Because that's something that God had delivered me from. And when God delivers you from it, you shut the door on that situation. And you don't go back to it. That's how you also shut the door. You shut the door from a sinful life to a life, a glorious life in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said that when we come to Christ, we are what? New creature. All old things are passed away. The whole, the new. And today, we are new in Christ because we have shut the door. We've let God move. And the dead thing that was the promise has arisen and is glorified and got power. And I encourage the saints of God. Let God be the center of your life. Establish a true relationship with him. And he will move. He will talk with you. He will commune with you. And just as you see in the Word of God, in the Scripture, those things will happen for you. And I leave you with a stone. There was a song. When I was singing deep in sin, far from the crystal shore, deeply staying within, Singing to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair from the waters of victory. Now safe am I. And what is the verse of that song? Love to lift it me. <clears throat> when I shut the door on those things that are not like God, his love lifts me. He gives me joy. <clears throat> Gives me a new outlook on life. That I am somebody. That I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. That He is my God. He is my shield and my bone. In Him will I trust. Trust God. Shut the door. And let God not fight.